dear students today we are going to study ointments now ointments creams and pastes lotions and liniments these all fall under the heading of semi solid dosage form now what is semi solid dosage form semi solid dosage form basically it consists of products having semi solid consistency which means jo product hai wo na to completely solid hai not completely liquid hai but it is semi solid consistency and such products they are basically used on the skin and on the mucous membrane for the therapeutic effect koi bhi jo unka medicinal effect hai wo produce karne ke liye or for the protective action for example jis tarah ki aap sunscreen lotions use karte hain to protect the skin from the uh, sunlight and to protect your skin from the tanning effect of the sunlight or to protect the skin uh, for, for of those people whose skin is photosensitive so uh, and similarly uh, these semi solid uh, products they are also used for the cosmetic purposes which means for the beautification of the skin and these uh, semi solid dosage forms basically they are of two types like medicated and non medicated medicated uh, semi solid uh, uh, semi solid uh, forms uh, of the uh, they have uh, they will have the medicated ingredient included in it which will produce a particular uh, medicinal uh, action and will produce the treatment for a particular disease and then the uh, other category is non medicated which will provide the lubrication uh, or the lubricating of the skin emollient effect which is the soothing of the skin and the protectant uh, effect or to the skin now these semi solid dosage forms they are basically applied on the skin or they could be used uh, topically and they could also be used on the mucous membranes like on the eye surface like on the nasal they could be used nasally they could be used in vagina and they could be used for the uh, they could be they are used for the local effect or the systemic effect now what is local effect basically it treats the particular area on which particular part of the skin particular patch on which it is applied and systemic when it reaches the systemic circulation and it produces the systemic effect now what are ointments ointments basically they are greasy or oily semi solid preparations which i have already explained to you and normally ointments are medicated for example they are used for the treatment of certain certain diseases for example they could be used for the pain relief they could be used for the itching so they are applied externally to the skin by to heal to soothe and to protect the skin protect the skin from the uh, from the dust or from the environment or from the uh, uh, microorganisms and they are they can uh, provide soothing effect to the skin and they are also used for the healing of the skin for example uh, if the skin is broken or if the skin is bruised or if it is cut cut or if it is burned then what happens then uh, ointments are used to heal the skin now ointments are viscous semi solid preparation viscous means they have a uh, they have a thick consistency they will be thick and they will be used topically on different body surfaces which i have already told you and the drug ingredients or the active pharmaceutical ingredients they are uh, dissolved or they are emulsified or they are suspended in the ointment ointment base now there are different kinds of ointment bases which we will uh, study in detail in the coming slides in the bases they are basically divided into five parts types of ointments unmedicated ointments and medicated ointments as the name indicates unmedicated ointments they do not contain any active ingredient or active pharmaceutical ingredient or any drug they are simply used as emollients which means to soothe the to soothe the skin and they are used as a protectants for example petroleum jelly petroleum jelly for example in the winter season your uh, the skin of the hands and feet it becomes very dry or the lips they become chapped or the skin of the face it becomes very dry. so in the winter season we use normally petroleum jelly why to to make our skin soft to make the skin of the hands and feet soft and to to avoid the chapping of the lips 
similarly meditative uh, ointments they are uh, they as uh, by the definition by the name they indicate that medicated ointments they contain drugs and drugs are active pharmaceutical ingredient and hence they show a, a local effect or systemic effect so a local effect uh, that is on the particular surface and systemic effect that is on the uh, it reaches the uh, systemic circulation and produces the systemic effect. We have different types of um, ointments uh, under the heading of medicated ointments. For example, dermatological ointments, which are used for on the skin, ophthalmic ointments, which are used on, uh, on the surface of eyes, rectal ointments, which are used in the rectum, and vaginal ointments, which are used for the treatment of the vaginal infections on the uh, in the vagina, nasal ointments, which are used for the uh, for the which are used nasally for the treatment of uh, treatment of different diseases. Now, dermatological ointments they are applied externally. For example, they are applied externally on the skin and uh, to the particular part or the area which is affected. And these ointments they are applied in the form of a thin layer, and then they are spread evenly with the help of uh, your fingertips using uh, slight pressure. Now, dermatological ointments they could be subdivided into epidermic ointments, endodermic ointments, and diadermic ointments. Now, epidermic ointments they what are these? These are the drugs, these are the ointments which exert the action on the epidermis of the skin, which is the epidermis layer of the skin. And that's why they are called epidermal ointments. For example, is ketoconazole ointment. So what is keto what is a ketoconazole ointment basically it is antifungal ointment it is used in the treatment of athlete foot what is athlete foot for example the athletes they are practicing uh, for their uh, games or race or uh, for the whole day in the ground and they are wearing joggers their their uh, their feet are constantly sweating and the uh, obviously uh, due to the sweat the the toes of the uh, feet or the area between the toes of the feet it becomes infected so for the treatment of that infection antifungal ointment which is used and which is ketoconazole ointment now ketoconazole ointment it is also used for the ringworm infection it is also used for seborrhea what is seborrhea that is the dandruff or the drying or the flaking of the skin so the so so basically dandruff it is also a fungal infection there there is dryness of the scalp of the skin and which causes itchiness and which causes the hair loss hair start falling so the dandruff it should not be left untreated it should be treated then we have endodermic ointments these have the drugs which produce action on the deeper layers of the cutaneous uh, tissue an example is demodex ointment now demodex ointment what happens actually there, there is demo demodex uh, mites which which in affect the lashes eyelashes so for demodex ointment is used for the treatment of the infection caused by that mite which is called demodex and for the uh, for that infection um, for the infection of uh, 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 caused by these mites uh, metronidazole antibiotic is also used now there is diademic ointment in which the drugs they penetrate in the uh, deeper layers of the skin and then they reach the systemic circulation and then they exert the systemic effect an example is nitroglycerin ointment now what happens nitroglycerin ointment it is used to relieve the pain where in the ns how it relaxes the muscles around, around the blood vessels decreases the pressure inside the ns and it relieves the pain then we have ophthalmic ointments. Uh, so ophthalmic ointments, as they are uh, used on the surface of the eyes, so what happens? Uh, or they could be used in in the lower uh, um, eyelid for the treatment of different eye diseases or infections or redness or itching or, or any type of allergy. So these ointments they should be sterile. The first point is that they should be sterilized. So they are applied inside the lower eyelid and. What sort of uh, ointment base is used for the preparation or formulation of ophthalmic ointment and hydrous base is used. Now, how these ointments are applied? They are applied as a very narrow band having a width of 0.25 to 0.5 inches and the example is uh, sulfacetamide sodium ointment. Then we have rectal ointments. So, rectal ointments, they are applied 
in the perianal uh, area or within the anal canal now what is perianal perianal means around the anus and anal canal anal canal basically it, it it's the large intestine uh, perineum below or uh, and rectum above so this is the anal canal so bases uh, which are used in the preparation of uh, rectal ions they include the combination of polyethylene dipole of different molecular weights for example PEG 300 and PEG 335 they are used in combinations then cetyl alcohol is used cetyl esters are used waxes are used liquid paraffin and white paraffin are used and example is benzophen ointment now what is cetyl alcohol basically cetyl alcohol it helps to soft the skin it is used as a stabilizer it stabilizes the uh, the preparation it thickens the preparation it produces a soothing effect it heals the heals the dry uh, dry skin now cetyl esters what are they they are synthetic waxes and they are used as a moisturizer and they are also used in the skin care what is white uh, we have white paraffin here what is white paraffin it is it is also called white petroleum jelly and it is very much greasy it is used as a moisturizer to moisturize the skin and it retained it by using this the uh, moisture is retained within the skin and it prevents the evaporation of the moisture from the skin and hence the skin it will not become dry it will be moisturized and the example is benzocaine ointment Benzocaine ointment, it is used as a local anesthetic and it is also used for to relieve the pain. Now, there is local anesthetic. Local anesthetic means that the it will cause the numbing of the particular area on which the anest on which anesthetic has been applied. But the general anesthetic, it is different. It, it means that it will produce the sleep and it will cause the uh, it will it will cause the general uh, anesthesia. So Local anesthetic benzocaine ointment is used uh, how it will relieve the pain if you apply it and on a particular surface or area it will relieve the pain. Then we have uh, vaginal ointments. They are applied to the uh, vaginal area or inside the vagina. And vagina is the area which is very much susceptible to the infections. So ointments, they should be free from the microorganisms or um, molds or yeast. An example is candesidin ointment. Now, what are molds? Molds are fungus. They have multicellular filaments. What is yeast? Yeast is a fungus which, ha which has single oval cells. And what, uh, what is the candesidin? Candes again uh, ointment it is used for the vaginal infection for the treatment of the injection uh, infection which has been produced in the vagina now nasal ointments nasal ointments they are used for the uh, topical treatment of the nasal mucosa now drugs they are absorbed in the general circulation through the rich blood supply of the nasal lining and the drugs used for this purpose are hypertrochum bromide ointment so what what the, what does this uh, ointment do it it is used in the asthma it is used in the bronchitis that is inflammation of the of the bronchioles so it is used for such purposes Advantages of ointments and they are very much uh, they are uh, very easy to handle with or deal with uh, as compared to the liquid dosage forms. We have studied liquid dosage forms. They have uh, they uh, they have uh, syrups or they have liquid preparations in the glass bottles. It is very difficult to handle them, to carry them, to transport them. You can patient cannot uh, patient cannot carry it uh, in in his or her pocket or in, in or in, in his purse and it is very difficult to deal with them because there, there are always a chance of spilling of the liquid out of the bottle and also there, there is chance of breakage of the uh, glass bottle so the handling of the uh, liquid dosage form is very difficult but as compared to the liquid dosage form the handling of ointments is or semi-solid dosage form uh, like ointments is very easy the patient can put it uh, put this simple you know, flexible tube of the ointment in the purse in the in the pocket and patient can use it uh, conveniently now the ointments they are uh, chemically more stable as compared to the liquid dosage form so liquid dosage forms they become they are uh, less chemically stable as compared to the ointment how i told you earlier that that we consider the uh, stability of the drug it is uh, of prime importance for us for example the physical stability the color should not deteriorate the smell the fragrance should not deteriorate and the uh, the, the, uh, the uh, aroma uh, taste the taste should not deteriorate and uh, the chemical stability means that the the chemical 
composition of the of the uh, or the formulation of the uh, uh, dosage form or the formulation which has been created it should not deteriorate it should not uh, change uh, the the chemicals which were used for the formulation of a particular preparation they should not react with each other, uh, each other and they should not change the chemistry of the of the dosage form uh, yielding to some some something else so um, these ointments they are chemically more stable as compared to the liquid dosage form these ointments they are directly applied on the body parts and they are uh, 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 avoid the exposure of the other parts uh, other parts to the drug so that is uh, very much uh, simple that if you if the patient has a problem on the feet or on the head so people a patient will apply the drug on the on the on feet or on head but rest of the parts of the of a parts of the body of patient they will remain intact so they are directly in, uh, applied at the site of uh, um, at the site of the affected part of the body so it is very suitable for patients and those patients who are afraid of the parenteral dosage form, who are afraid of injections, who don't want to take the help of the uh, technicians and who don't want to take the drug in the form of the injections. So it is very convenient and easy for the patients. And those patients who cannot uh, take the medicine through oral routes, for example, they cannot swallow the tablet or uh, so it is very much uh, helpful and convenient for such patients. Now, the ointments basically be uh, lengthen or uh, increase or prolong the contact time of the drug and the affected area because ointments are greasy you will apply it on the skin so they will remain on the skin for a long time and hence the contact time between the drug and the affected part or the area it is prolonged now bioavailability of the drugs administered as ointment is more how because it prevents the passage through the uh, through the uh, liver so it avoids the uh, first pass effect and bioavailability of the drugs is uh, more. Now, what is bioavailability? The fraction of the administered drug reaching the systemic circulation. Now, if the drug is uh, administered intravenously, then bioavailability is said to be 100%. Now, what are the disadvantages of uh, ointments? They are bulkier or they are heavier as compared to the solid dosage form. Uh, so, and when the application of an exact quantity of the ointment is required, it is difficult to assure that the same quantity is applied. For example, the patient, in, in he or she will apply the ointment on the on the surface of the skin uh, by uh, in, uh, approximately. He cannot apply the exact amount of the uh, uh, of the uh, ointment because he has to uh, he has to just uh, uh, assume the quantity uh, that he uh, he applied for example 5 milligrams so it is not sure there is no such surety that the exact quantity has been used by the patient so uh, the, these uh, ointments are uh, less stable as compared to the solid dosage form so solid dosage form it is more stable now, what are the medicinal uh, uh, uses or applications of the ointments? So they could be used as protectants, which means they will, they could be used as a protective layer or protective um, uh, a thin layer which is formed on the skin and it will protect the skin from the, for example, uh, dust or the pollens or the environmental factors or from the sunlight. So it could be it would be or from the microorganisms so they will protect the skin in case of the bruised skin or the cut skin where when the ointment is applied so they will it will protect the skin from the uh, outside factors they are antiseptics uh, and they are Emollients, emollients, which means uh, they will produce a soothing effect, a softening effect uh, on the uh, skin. Then they are used as antiprotectics to reduce the itching, uh, and they are used as keratolytics, which means the excessive uh, skin which is formed. Uh, it is used for the uh, for for the keratolytic action. For example, calluses, corns. This is the, uh, the, the this is the excessive uh, skin which is formed. They could be used as astringents, which means the shrinkage of the mucous membrane and protect ointment it protects the skin against moisture air sunlight and uh, any external factors or environmental factors like dust and pollution antiseptic ointment it is used to destroy the uh, bacteria or microorganism or stop the growth of the bacteria so uh, uh, antiseptic ointment it could it could have the bacteriostatic effect or the bactericidal effect 
and now bacterial infections these are uh, often uh, very uh, deep deep seated and so a base uh, which uh, should be used for the preparation of the ointment it should have the capacity to penetrate the deep layers of the skin and release the medication very effectively and very properly uh, as it is required or needed now um, uh, ointments which are used for the um, emollient effect they should be very easy to apply they should be non greasy they should not damage the dress is they should be uh, easy to apply and they should uh, also penetrate the skin which means they must ha must have the penetrating power now preparation of the um, uh, ointments um, we have two methods one is incorporation method and the other one is uh, fusion method okay now incorporation method what what is done the components of the uh, or the ingredients or the components of the formulation they are mixed until and unless a uniform very uh, very uh, grit free uh, uniform preparation is is made now on on small scale extemporaneous compounding is done now what is extemporaneous compounding it is the preparation of the therapeutic product for the individual patient in response to the identified need aapne kya karna hai extemporaneous compound ek particular patient ke liye particular individual ke liye uh, ek therapeutic product jo hai wo banaya jata hai according to the identified uh, identified need of that patient and what happens uh, um, uh, the pharmacist if he or she they can mix the components using mortar and pestle which you have already seen in the lab aapne isko lab mein bottle को यूज भी किया है एंड स्पेचुला भी यूज कर सकते हैं टू रब द इंग्रेडिएंट्स टुगेदर ऑन एन ऑइंटमेंट स्लैब ऑइंटमेंट स्लैब यू हैव सीन इन द लैब सो दीज आर द दीज आर द यू कैन से अप्रेटिस दिस इज द अप्रेटिस व्हिच कुड बी एम्प्लॉयड और यूज्ड फॉर द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ द ऑइंटमेंट ऑन द स्मॉल स्केल मोटर एंड पेसल एंड एंड स्लैब एंड स्पेचुला एंड द ऑइंटमेंट स्लैब इट कुड बी मेड अप ऑफ ग्लास और इट कुड बी मेड अप ऑफ पोर्सलिन प्लेट और इट कुड बी अ tile now on uh, some, uh, what happens a uh, ointment mill it is also used for the preparation of ointment and what does the ointment mill do it basically uses force which is created by the rollers to decrease the particle size or to disperse the agglomerates jo uska jo particles jo ikatthe liye hue hain unko disperse karne ke liye use hota hai and to homogenize the viscous material uh, jitna bhi aapka viscous material hai usko homogeneous banane ke liye uniform banane ke liye on means they are used now uh, jab uh, when you are uh, you want to prepare an ointment by using spatulation with the help of a spatula and ointment slab the pharmacist uh, uh, usually uh, makes the ointment with a stainless steel uh, steel uh, spatula uh, which has a very long and broad blade and he uh, and, and removes the accumulation of the ointment on the large spatula or the smaller uh, spatula but in case of the metals there are certain metals which could react with the uh, 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 there are certain uh, metals which could react with the spatula so in that case the rubber, rubber spatula will be used okay so if if you are using a metal spatula and you are working with iodine then you then iodine will react with the metal uh, of the spatula so you will not use metal spatula in that case you will be using rubber spatula in that case because the rubber the rubber the rubber spatula rubber is inert it will not it is chemically inert it will not show or uh, indicate or uh, or uh, proceed uh, with the chemical reaction now incorporation of liquids you have incorporated solids in the in the ointment uh, base uh, for the formulation of ointments and you could also incorporate liquids uh, in the ointment base uh, for the preparation of ointments now liquid substances they are added to the ointment uh, after choosing a best uh, ointment base which has the capacity or ability to absorb or accept the volume of the liquid now small amount of liquid solution they could be Uh, incorporated in oligomerous ointment and hydrophilic ointment bases they accept large amounts of uh, water or liquids now addition of uh, aqueous preparation uh, preparation to a uh, to a hydrophobic base now first what happens the aqueous solution it is incorporated into small amount of hydrophilic base and then the mixture is added to the hydro hydrophobic base fusion method what happens in fusion method 
basically it is liquefying or melting by by the help of heat or by using heat all of the components of the formulation or some of the components of the formulation they are first melted together and then they are cooled uh, with constant stirring and then they congeal and when they congeal what happens uh, uh, what happens they 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 are uh, uh, they are then further processed now in the heat liable substances which are heat sensitive they are always added at the last at the end of the formulation when the mixture of the when the temperature of the mixture is not very high it is very uh, low or it is enough for the uh, for that particular ingredient so we basically do not want the decomposition of any ingredient which we are using in the uh, using uh, uh, to formulate the uh, the um, uh, ointment so heat sensitive agents they are added at the end of the formulation when the when the temperature will be very uh, tolerable for the uh, for the heat sensitive ingredients on small scale uh, basically in this fusion method it is performed in a porcelain skin uh, porcelain dish or glass beaker uh, it is rubbed with the spatula or it is um, or it is uh, 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 triturated in the mortar to why why to get a uniform texture of the uh, ointment uh, ointment should not be having any grittiness or ointment should not be having any sort of lumps or agglomerates it should be very much uniform so how will you be achieve uniformity uniformity will be achieved by the uh, by the uh, by using the uh, you can use it with uh, by using uh, the spatula or by using the uh, mortaring pestle so the small uh, ingredients they will be the uh, all of the ingredients they will become uh, uniformly uh, distributed and a uniform smooth texture or, uh, or um, is achieved on large scale uh, uh, large steam jacketed kettles they are used and what happens after the congealing of the ointments they are uh, passed to the ointment mill now storage and dispensing of the ointments they are stored in a tightly closed and filled containers so the the the, the uh, container should be uh, tightly closed uh, it should not be loosely closed and it uh, and the container it should be completely filled no space should be left above the above the ointment now the uh, changes in the temperature uh, they they can lead to the crystallization of food drug which means the crystals will be formed in the a drug which is not acceptable and the ointment base it it may it may uh, undergo change which means the there are, there are certain changes which would be observed in the ointment base now uh, these ointments they could be dispensed in the jars which are made up of glass they could be dispensed in the jars which are made up of uh, plastic material and they could be dispensed in the collapsible tubes which you must have seen and observed uh, during the use of uh, certain uh, ointments uh, for example we have polyfex ointment we have different ointments we have a bonjela which is used for the blisters in the mouth or or in the tongue or on on the gums so in plastic and glass these are uh, basically uh, ideal uh, materials for the uh, for the packaging but both materials they have their own advantages and disadvantages glass is breakable but, but plastic is not um, is unbreakable glass is heavy to carry plastic is light to carry so these uh, everything has its own advantages and disadvantages it will dis depend on our choice of the formulation which sort of formulation we are making which kind of formulation we are making and for that that particular kind of uh, uh, formulation which sort of the container would be best suitable if the glass is best suitable we will use and, and dis uh, store it and uh, dispense it in the glass and if the plastic is suitable then we will uh, dispense it in the plastic now sterile ointments these, these are just ointments which are um, uh, which are microorganism free they are uh, they are sterilized well uh, for the use for example uh, ointments which are used in the eyes they must be sterilized now sterilized ointments they are dispensed in the tubes or they are dispensed as a single dose units um, by to protect the product against the contamination of the microorganisms during the use so if the uh, if the uh, patient uh, takes the single dose of the sterile ointment then he will take the uh, other dose of the uh, uh, sterile ointment and in this way the 
uh, contamination will not be uh, will not take place uh, tin tubes they are also used but there is a disadvantage of uh, tin, tin, tin tubes they will cause corrosion now what is corrosion when the redefined metal it converts to the stable form like oxide or hydroxide or sulfide and what is corrosion in the simple language it is the slow destruction of the material by the chemical reaction with the environment so what happens corrosion uh, ha happens with the with the hydrophilic uh, antwins if you are using the tin tubes now what are the components or the excipients or the um, which are uh, normally utilized or uh, for the formulation of the ointments basically there is a base base is a, a vehicle and vehicle uh, what is the purpose of a vehicle it will deliver the drug to the uh, 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 deliver the drug and it will uh, impart the emollient properties emollient means the uh, softening and the soothing properties lubrication means it will lubricate the uh, uh, lubricate the uh, preparation and the example is petrol atom white petrol atom and yellow and white ointment mineral oil lanolin and cholesterol now what is petrol atom petrol atom is called petroleum jelly or white petrol atom or soft paraffin uh, 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 for example mineral oil now this petrol atom basically it is a uh, it is what it is used in the cosmetic purpose for the cosmetic purposes in the skin care products it is used this is petrol atom. What is white ointment? White ointment has 5% of the white wax and 95% of the white petrol atom. And it is also called as simple ointment. And what is yellow ointment? Yellow ointment, it has 1000 gram of yellow wax and which in uh, uh, 50 grams and petrol atom 950 grams. So what is the difference between yellow ointment and white ointment? The difference is in the yellow ointment, yellow wax is used. In the white ointment, white wax is used. And there is also the uh, difference in the in the uh, proportion so basically this is the difference between difference between white and yellow ointment so now then we have uh, buffers buffers basically they are acid conjugates um, uh, acid conjugate base mixes and they are used to control ph in the formulation and uh, how they can control uh, uh, the, the ph they can uh, control it by balancing the ph of the uh, the formulation if the uh, now what happens uh, ionization stage of the drug uh, they, they, they it is controlled by the buffers and the buffers they give stability to the uh, formulation and the example is citrate buffer, phosphate buffer, tartrate buffer. Now, chelating agents, uh, they basically, uh, what are they? they? There are certain metal ions. Now, chelating agents, they bind with the metal ions and then they prevent the process of oxidation, which is auto-oxidation, which is called self-oxidation. And this uh, process of self-oxidation, it is catalyzed uh, in the presence of the metal ions. And hence, it increases the uh, action of the preservatives by binding the iron and copper ions, and uh, is, uh, which are very much essential for the microbial growth. We have the example of EDTA and citric acid. Now, what is EDTA? EDTA is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. Basically, it has four carboxylic groups and two amine groups, and with a lone pair of electrons that chelate the calcium and other metal ions. Basically, it binds the metal ions, for example, EDTA binds the metal ions, for example, calcium, magnesium, iron, lead, and then it is this EDTA basically it is also used to prevent the uh, blood som uh, sa uh, sample from clotting and to remove the calcium and lead from the body. Now, in emulsifying agents or emulsifiers, what, what they do, they uh, stabilize the, um, the em emulsion, uh, whether it is oil and water emulsion or water and oil emulsion. We have studied several examples of emulsifiers in the chapter of emulsions. And emulsifiers, they also reduce the surface tension of the two phases which are present in the emulsion. As we already know that emulsions has two phases, one is oil phase and the other is water phase and emulsifiers they prevent the coalescence of the individual phases which means the two phases they should be uh, in should be separated they should not coalesce or uh, mix together now example of the emulsifying agents it includes um, detergents emulsifying waxes cetosterol alcohol and polysorbate 20. now what is cetosterol alcohol it stabilizes the emulsion whether it is water in oil emulsion or oil in water emulsion cetosterol alcohol it has emollient properties it is used in anhydrous formulations it is it also 
also increases the viscosity of the formulation. Polysorbate 20 is also an emulsifier and it is also used as a surfactant which means it decreases the surface tension of the liquid in which it is dissolved. Now we have thickening agents. What happens in thickening agents? They increase the viscosity of the for, for, of the formulation. Now thickening agents, they could be you, you can get them from uh, multiple sources like natural thickening agents, semi-synthetic th thickening uh, thickening agents uh, for the, from from the natural source for the from the semi-synthetic source from the synthetic source. The examples of the uh, natural uh, 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 thickening agents is cellulose and pectin, and semi-synthetic uh, uh, thickening agents example is methyl cellulose. Uh, sodium carboxymethyl cellulose and synthetic uh, uh, has example of carbopole. Now carbopole it has different uh, 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 different uh, uh, varieties and numbers which are put in the front of the carbopole. So carbopole is also a synthetic um, thickening agent. Humectants which absorbs the which retains the moisture within the skin which prevents the escape of the moisture from the skin and hence it it, it makes the skin uh, moisturized. It keeps the skin moisturized humectant it basically uh, uh, helps in the water retention of uh, uh, water retention uh, in the formulation uh, and it on the skin humectants it it, it it keeps the skin moisturized example is glycerin propylene glycol polyethylene glycol and low low molecular weights now glycerin and propylene glycol and polyethylene glycols we have already uh, studied th these in the chapter of the pharmaceutical solvents in which we have studied the properties of these um, these uh, solvents in detail and they are used as a uh, co-solvents and as solvents in the in the pharmaceutical preparations glycerin it increases the viscosity of the formulation it is sweet in taste propylene glycol and polyethylene gly glycol they are also used as co-solvents Permeation enhancers, they help in the diffusion process of the active ingredient across the across the stratum corneum by the chemical modification. Example is ethanol, uh, which is uh, an oleic acid, propylene glycol, and polyethylene glycol 400. Preservatives, they are very necessary to prevent the microbial growth within the formulation because we do not want the uh, formulation or preparation to deteriorate due to the microbial attack or due to the growth of the microbes in the formulation. So preservatives, they are of four types, acidic, acid, alcohol, cottony, ammonium compounds, and organic materials. Now, acid, example of the acid preservatives is benzoic acid, alcohol preservatives is phenyl, ethyl alcohol, cottonary ammonium is cysterile, dimethyl, benzoic ammonium chloride and organic material is thymer cell so we have these preservatives which could be used we have other preservatives which have which we have already studied in the previous chapters and those are methyl paraben and propyl paraben they are also used now antioxidants as the name indicates they prevent the oxidation of different components and antioxidants include the examples of tocopherol which is vitamin E, butylated hydroxy uh, toluene and a reducing agent uh, uh, for example ascorbic acid which is vitamin C. So these are antioxidants and these are uh, uh, used to uh, used for the uh, um, for for the beautification for example vitamin c is used for the beautification of the skin vitamin e is also used for the beautification skin and they prevent the, the oxidation of components there are certain uh, fragrances uh, which have very uh, good uh, uh, odor uh, and they are added to the formulation to enhance the uh, good fragrance of the or odor of the formulation or the preparation for example lavender oil is used rose oil is used lemon oil is used and almond oil is used you all are familiar with these oils now there are certain bases which are used for the uh, for the uh, preparation of the oint uh, ointments and these what should be the quality of these bases they should be uh, compatible with skin which means they should not cause any sort of irritation to the skin or itching to the skin or any sort of the redness to the skin they should be compatible with skin these bases they should be stable uh, uh, chemically they should be very smooth and they should be pliable they should be non irritating and non sensitizing and they should be neutral or inert non-irritating they should not be causing any sort of irritation to the skin and they, sh they, they should be inert be because they should not react with the other ingredients or the components or the excipients which are present in the formulation 
they should be capable of absorbing uh, water and releasing the incorporated medicament when it is applied on the skin so uh, and they must be sterilizable because the ointments uh, the ophthalmic ointments we are we need uh, sterilized ophthalmic ointments to be used or instilled into the eyes then uh, the choice of the base it depends on certain factors and what are those factors those factors are the um, uh, rate release of the drug from the ointment base and at which rate the drug is released from the ointment base and what and what, what sort of rate uh, for the drug release you demand for your particular product for example you want the instant release of the drug from the substance or you want the delayed release of the drug from the substance so it it depends on your requirement and then we have uh, uh, the rate and extent of topical and percutaneous drug absorption to at which rate the drug gets absorbed uh, or topically and uh, either it is too slow or it is too fast then the uh, desirability of occlusion of the moisture from the skin which means that the, uh, if you don't want the moisture to escape from the skin you want to uh, occlude the moisture so it, it is your uh, desire if you or if you want this then you have to choose the base according to that stability of the drug in the ointment base it is very much important so ointment base should be such like that it should not interfere with the stability of the drug it should not deteriorate the drug or it should not react with the drug or it should not damage the drug because we want the effect or the we want the um, benefit of the drug we want the medicinal action of the drug and if the drug is not stable it gets destabilized it gets damaged by the use of the on um, base then our uh, our objective will not be achieved so um, the effect of the drug on the consistency of base what is the effect of the drug on the, uh, on the consistency of base uh, whether the drug is making the base a very liquidy or uh, whether the drug is making the base very uh, very solid and thick so what is the action or effect of the drug on the base consistency now uh, there should be easy removal of the base uh, on the washing when you wash off the uh, wash of the ointment with the help of the water then the ointment base it should be easily removed for the skin from the skin and should not stick or uh, to the skin uh, now the characteristic of the surface to which it is applied uh, we should keep in uh, keep in mind the uh, characteristic one of the surface for example whether we are creating an ointment for the uh, nasal surface or whether we are creating it for the ophthalmic surface or whether we are creating it for the rectum so it depends on the surface on which the ointment would be used now classification of bases basically bases they are of five types hydrocarbon bases absorption bases emulsion bases water removable bases and water soluble bases hydrocarbon bases are also called oleaginous bases they are water free they incorporate the water uh, into themselves in very small amounts and with much difficulty they have emollient effect it produces the uh, softening soothing effect they are uh, they are uh, retained on the skin for a long period of time and they um, um, uh, prevent the uh, moisture escape from the skin and it is very difficult to wash the hydrocarbon bases with the water so they are difficult to wash off example is petrol atom usp white petrol atom usp yellow ointment usp and mineral oil absorption bases they are anhydrous bases they have hydrophobic ingredients they are also called emulsifiable bases because they contain no water and they will they can help in the formation of the water and oil emulsion or oil and water emulsion and if water and oil type emulsions are made they should be having the capacity to to absorb the water without uh, changes in the consistency of the ointment without making the ointment more liquidy or more uh, thick and similarly in the mixtures of the animal stored is uh, steroids with the petrolatum they are also used for in combination for example cholesterol and melanin in different proportions and fractions they are mixed and combined and uh, with the white petrolatum and they are also available in under different uh, uh, commercial names for example a uh, eucerin and a for an example of anhydrous absorption base is hydrophilic petrolatum usb emulsion bases now emulsion bases uh, according to the type of emulsion these bases are classified as oil and water emulsions or water and oil emulsions now water and oil emulsions they are not water washable as oil is the external phase and these uh, such uh, such sort of bases they are used in the dermatological preparations which are needed for the skin purposes and cosmetic cream